is fucking awesome. I think we're all on the same page about that, right? Fire is one of those elements that can turn anything into an exciting scene. I mean, look at the newest Batman, for example. You think it would be half as exciting if he was jumping over, I don't know, water sprinklers? And yeah, the title is not a clickbait. We really are gonna make the most powerful fire shader, where you can generate any kind of fire you want. And it doesn't really matter what style are you going for either. You can do kinda realistic stuff, or just go all in for the stylized look. You are in charge here. And to really work on my shader skills, and to make it a bit more challenging, I restricted myself to only a single plane of geometry. So anything we're gonna accomplish today is gonna be via nodes. So even though I started fairly hyped and confident that I can do it, after all, I call myself 3D artist, right? Uh, I gotta admit that it wasn't an easy task to figure out at first. I sacrificed like a week of my life and I have studied, researched and carefully examined what it is to be fire to get the essence of what's so hot about it. I went above and beyond my usual comfort zone and finally, after a week of hard work and sleepless nights, I honestly have no idea. But I know how to make one and... I mean, yes, there's math, but it's really not that hard. Unless, of course, you think it's easy, then I guess you're right. Ultimately, it boils down to two things. Distortion and proper color scheme. So out of respect for your time, I won't bore you with all the first we delete the default cube nonsense, because all we need is a plane and we dive straight into the shader editor. Now what makes fire look believable is mostly its chaotic nature. It is mesmerizing to look into because of how unpredictable it is. And nothing represents randomness better than a procedural noise texture. So I just threw one in to distort the original texture coordinates. And as you will see, distortion is gonna be kind of the main theme throughout the whole thing but also the tricky one to master. Now, to preview the results, I used a gradient node, and it was a good starting point. However, I had to spend some time with various math nodes and mapping node to make sure that the fire is positioned on the bottom of the plane, and that I can control how thick it is. And after a few minutes, I had a result that's not too bad. I mean, this kinda already starts to look like fire, but of course, it's, it's nowhere near the high standard that is expected from this fine channel. So I had to find a way to crank up the chaos substantially. I could do a few things about it, but from my experience working in game development, the simplest solutions are usually the best place to start and then iterate from that point. So since we are all familiar how the quick math works, two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. I was thinking to myself that logically, if one distortion gives me, yeah, fire, then the question is, what about second? And who would have guessed it's gonna be that simple? I mean, not enough chaos? Just slap another noise. So now that I introduced the levels to this game, I thought that the potential for different looks is basically infinite. Especially when I realized that, hey, there's more than just a noise noise, right? I mean, I can also use Voronoi noise for a vast different look. But then... This sounds a little bit too simple. I mean, I can't just stack distortions on top of each other forever and hope it will improve my fire shader, right? Right? Well, of course I can, only I have to be sneaky about it, and instead of distorting the same coordinates over and over again until oblivion, I just have to mix it up a little with the original ones here and there, and we're good. So ultimately, I settled at three distortion levels, which I know may not sound too impressive, but in the end, it's not the size of the graph that matters, but what you can do with it. And also my PC is an old potato, and when I crank up the number too high, then... I don't know, it produces these weird artifacts? Stupid old piece of shit. So I will stick to three. Now I went back to do a little bit of tweaking, adjusting the values, and well, when I say a little bit, I mean like an hour or two, because I couldn't decide what I want. But eventually I settled for something stylized to stay in tune with the whole channel theme. At this point, it looked really promising, but fire is not fire if it's not moving. So it was time to animate it, and because I suck at animation more than I do at making YouTube videos, I just let the drivers do the work for me. So I got this sweet little setup, which I copy over and plug to every single noise, and I have literally one value in the back that controls the speed of the animation. And with some simple, and to be honest, quite generic color scheme, it already was gorgeous. However, every artist knows that no stylized shader is complete without an awful amount of bloom everywhere, so I made sure I got that cover as well. And at this point the job was basically done, and I could just call it a day, record it, swim in the old internet cloud for a day, but you know me, I like to always add a little extra, you know, like push it just a little bit further, 
and I mean, fire was done before, it's nothing new. But what I haven't seen before in any of the fire shaders was the hot air distortion effect that you get above hot stuff like asphalt in the summer, for example, or your mom. And so after a few very frustrating attempts and keeping in mind that I have to stay constrained to a single plane, I finally figured out how to use the refraction shader properly, which by the way is one of the most underrated nodes in the whole shader editor. Because you can make wild stuff with it, but maybe that's a topic for another time. So the refraction shader also got the standard noise distortion treatment, and because it's just a hot air, I left it at one distortion level, which was more than enough. You wouldn't see a difference anyway. Now all I had to do is to combine the hot air with my fire, make sure it appears only around the fire, set up few controls to make my life easier with the tweaking later on, and the shader is done. Here are the notes for those of you interested in copying it. Hope it's readable this time. But if you feel lazy to do it from scratch, or you just want to support me, you can always grab it from my Gumroad, link in the description. And if you are not a huge fan of fire shaders and you much prefer water, for example, you can check out my other video, which is by the way probably my best work so far, about a beautiful stylized water shader. And for all of you who plan to play with fire today, go crazy with it, and if you happen to use it, make sure to share with me on Twitter. It always makes my day when I see your creative takes on my tutorials, so I would much appreciate it. And to the elite one percenters that stay until the end of every video, you never disappoint. So leave a comment down below so I can thank you personally, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!